Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be taking a look at running four sticks of DDR5 Expo memory from G-Skill on an AMD Ryzen 9 9950X3D with an Asus Crosshair Hero motherboard. So this is the new X870 motherboard. So a word about DDR5 and four sticks. There's been a lot of misinformation on the internet about can you do four sticks or you can only do two sticks. The truth is you can do four sticks. We're gonna prove that in this video. Um, and you can also run them at high speeds. However, a couple of things to be aware of. What we're going to show in this video is single rank DIMMs. So this kit from G-Skill is a 48 gigabyte DDR5 6400 Expo profile kit that runs at 1.35 volts, so CL32. The link for this specific part is in the description of this video. So if you wanna basically copy this setup for your own build, feel free to do so. So basically what this involves is purchasing two of the exact same kit that way you're trying to match the memory so that all four sticks are very similar as much as possible. Now that you cannot really make it so that they're exactly the same, the only way to really do that is if you were to buy a single kit that comes with four sticks right out the gate. But because this is not really feasible, we have to buy two of the exact same kit to try to get as close as possible to matching a four dim kit, essentially. So, We've got four sticks here. This is 48 gigabytes, so 24 times two, that's 48. And then you have two more, so it's another 48. So 48 plus 48, or 24 times four, equals a total of 96 gigabytes. The reason why this is easy and plug and play on most motherboards is because it is single rank DIMMs. Currently, 24 gigabyte memory sticks are the highest capacity you can get on a single rank DIMM. So, Four of these is going to be very similar to if you were to run a 96 gigabyte kit. So for example, this one here is a 48 times two, which is a 96 gigabyte dual rank kit. Now, if you were to run two of this kit for a total of 192 gigabytes of memory, that is significantly harder on the memory controller because you have double sided PCBs on every stick, and there's four of them. So that's the equivalent to trying to run like eight sticks of DDR4 back in the day. And only really the high-end desktop platforms like Threadripper, for example, were capable of doing that. So that is the reason why you might see stuff online of people talking about, oh, you can't run four sticks of DDR5. Well, the reality is you can. It's just if you're doing dual rank, you can't run them at very high speeds without manual tuning. This is a subject on this channel that we have covered in depth in multiple videos now. So if you are curious about running 128 or 192 or even 256 across four sticks, check out those earlier videos because that kind of sheds light on how to get that working. But for this video, we're gonna be doing 96 gigs on single rank, which is much, much easier to do. Okay, now we need to install the memory correctly this is where I think a lot of people mess up when they're trying to do like two different kits for four sticks total. But you need to take the first kit and they need to be on channel A or channel B, but you do not want to mix them. So meaning this kit were designed and built at the exact same time on the same batch. So they have the same micro tolerances for the impedance values and that sort of thing. So. We're gonna put these on channel A, so that's A1 and A2. And then we're gonna take the second kit that I haven't opened yet, but the second one is gonna go on B1 and B2. What I see a lot of people do is they put the first one on A2 and B2, and then they go and put the new one on A1 and B1, which is completely wrong. And that's probably why it doesn't work for a lot of people. So, number, so step one when doing this is to install the memory correctly. So from G-Skill, the DDR5 Expo memory looks like this. So it has a white outline. You do not get this on the XMP version. And also it says Neo. So Trident Z5 Neo means that it is designed to work with an AMD platform. Now that doesn't mean you can't use this with an Intel platform. You can absolutely use this with an Intel platform. Likewise, you can use an Intel XMP memory kit on an AMD platform. People have been doing that all throughout history because there was no Expo until DDR5. So,
first memory stick is in A1. The second one is going to go right next to it. So we have the first memory kit installed on channel A. So A1 and A2. Now we're going to install the second kit on channel B. It's going to be on B1 and B2. Okay, so once we have all four of them installed, now we can power up the system. And start it up. All right, so code 15, code 15, memory training. And because we are running 96 gigabytes total, the memory training time is going to be longer than normal, especially because it's four sticks of memory. Just keep that in mind. The initial training takes a while, and it's probably going to come up at 3600 because that is the official supported speed for both AMD and Intel when running this amount of memory in a 2D PC configuration. So I'm gonna let this train all the way to give viewers an idea of how long the process takes. One thing I noticed is that ASUS, ASUS takes a pretty long time on the initial post for uh, like new DDR5 installed. Actually takes quite a bit longer than ASRock and MSI. So we're just gonna let it go to give people a full picture here of how long this takes. But this is the other reason why I feel like having that postcode debug, you know, telling me code 15, that way I know that we're that it's actually doing something. Because if I didn't have this, then that little amber LED in there, so if I zoom in on it, you can see on the motherboard, it has that little amber or orange colored light. That also means DRAM, that is ASUS's DRAM LED. So Gigabyte typically would have a blinking red LED, and I think ASRock would have a red LED. I forget exactly which one, but they all have different colors to indicate what's going on. But this is the reason why the postcode debug is just so much more valuable in this scenario, and that's why I just don't recommend any motherboard that does not have the postcode debug. Thankfully, with X870 and B850, the motherboard manufacturers started including the postcode on $300 motherboards. So it is possible to get a $300 board, even though $300 is still a lot of money for a motherboard. But at least it gets a postcode debug, whereas last time with, you know, X670 and B650, you had to pay upwards of like $400. Or in the case of X670E, you had you used to have to pay $500 just to get a postcode debug on the motherboard. So thankfully they have kind of like made this more practical. I think that if I had to guess, the number of RMA returns or just straight up returns to places like Micro Center and Newegg for motherboards taking a long time to post because the user didn't know that it was just simply memory training was probably insane. It was probably an insane an insanely high amount of RMAs or just returns when in fact there was nothing wrong with the hardware. So uh, yeah, I guess they learned that uh, putting postcode debugs can help avoid a bunch of unnecessary returns. But we're gonna let this go. I know it's gonna take like five minutes or so initially, but oh, and then, now I say five, five minutes and there it goes. So there we go, now it's starting to change. That is the CPU, 4F, it's gonna go to like 90 something. There's the white LED, that means it's going to post. Green means it's going to post. 
96, 98, there's the green, and we are in. Okay, so once we're in the BIOS, you just want to verify that everything came up normal. So I've actually already loaded 6400 from the previous memory kit, but we're going to show how to load the Expo profile. You can see we are running 96 gigabytes. You can see it over on the right-hand side. Capacity, it says 98,000, but that's basically 96 gigabytes of memory. And then we're going to go to Extreme Tweaker, and then right up here on an ASUS motherboard under where it says AI Overclock Tuner, we're going to set this to Expo 1. So there's a couple of things here to be aware of. There's Expo 1, which means it will load the primary timings, and then ASUS, with its infinite wisdom, will choose the secondary and tertiary timings during the training. If you do not want ASUS to do this, then select Expo 2. Expo 2 means that you want it to adhere to the memory profile from the memory manufacturer. So in this case, G-Skill will load the entire SPD from G-Skill's profile into the BIOS. So if you want it to be full spec from G-Skill or your memory brand that you're using, you will load Expo 2. Expo tweaked, Expo on the fly. Expo tweaked means that ASUS will probably do something like, it'll use a higher TREFI or something like that to reduce the memory latency. Expo on the fly plus means that it will allow for dynamic adjustments. If you are to use it, if you're using something like Ryzen Master, for instance, to overclock in the operating system for the memory specifically, I typically go with Expo 1 or Expo 2. But for what we're going to do here, we're going to go ahead and load Expo 1 and let ASUS choose the tertiary timings. So I know for a lot of people that are wanting to do benchmarking, like if you're going to compare different sets of motherboards, for example, you're probably not going to use Expo 1 because now this is going to scale differently from what G-Skill intended. But if we want to stick to G-Skill spec, we can load Expo 2 and that will load the entire SPD profile. So you can see, so it's going to set it to 6400 with these primary timings at 1.35 volts and then automatically set the frequency there and then we scroll down here and a couple of things that I want to point out so it'll automatically set the VDD for the DRAM and the VDDQ to whatever the SPD in this case the Expo 1 profile says which is 1.35 volts for this memory kit so that's really all you need to do you don't need to change VDDIO you can leave that on auto and then the one thing that I will point out possibly if you want to run a specific voltage for SOC, you can set this to manual mode. And I like to use 1.2 volts. I do not recommend running VSOC above 1.2 volts. And then that's basically it. That's all that needs to be done because we're running single rank DIMMs. We do not need to mess with the proc ODT or the bus termination values. That does not apply to single rank DIMMs. That is only necessary if you're running dual rank DIMMs which we've covered in previous videos. So now we're gonna load this, press F10, it's gonna load that, and we're gonna let it train and get into Windows and see how everything works. All right, and then once we're in Windows, you wanna run some stability test uh, benchmarks or games or something that really stresses the memory. So in this case, we're running the Forspoken benchmark because Forspoken uses Direct Storage 1.0. So it hits the memory and the CPU pretty hard you can see here we have the full 96 gigabytes running at 6400 mega transfers and that's four out of four dims that are populated and it looks like the game is stressing the CPU uh, quite well there as well as the GPU so this is typically how I would test four sticks of memory in the operating system after testing outside the operating system with mem tests like we showed in our previous video with 192 gigabytes of DDR5. So that's basically it guys. That's how you get four sticks of memory working on an AM5 platform at 6400 mega transfers. Hope you guys found this video useful and let me know any questions you have or comments in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.